As Columbia re-entered Earth's atmosphere, an ominous shudder seized the cabin. Commander Rick Husband was met with a barrage of flashing warnings on the control panels, shattering the illusion of a smooth descent back to Earth. Suddenly, the shuttle's crew cabin was breached, a violent depressurization ripping through the cabin. Air hissed away, and chaos ensued as the once reliable cockpit spiraled into disarray, the plummeting temperature rendering their instruments lifeless. In a frantic struggle for survival, the crew battled to reclaim control from the clutches of a merciless flat spin that twisted Columbia out of their grasp. Despite their valiant efforts, the shuttle was ensnared in a fatal dance, making the Earth outside their windows blur in a dizzying spiral. As searing gases invaded, sealing their fate, Columbia and her brave souls aboard were consumed by the Inferno. In that harrowing instant, all hands abroad were lost. This is the tale of the space shuttle Columbia's final mission. In the late 1970s, the birth of the space shuttle Columbia marked a revolutionary leap in reusable space vehicles. It launched atop a powerful booster and returned airplane-like, gliding to a runway landing. Central to its design was the thermal protection system designed to shield it from the intense re-entry heat. This shield was made of two main parts, a tough material called reinforced carbon-carbon for the very hot areas and lighter silica tiles for the rest of the shuttle. These parts worked together to soak up, bounce back, and get rid of the heat, making sure the shuttle could safely get through the heat barrier. The silica tiles were especially important because they could handle temperatures up to 1,260 degrees Celsius and still cool down quickly after being heated. But these tiles were also very fragile and could be easily damaged by small pieces of debris. This meant that the shuttle needed careful checking and maintenance to keep this protective shield working well for every mission. Speaking of exploration and discovery, not all journeys require us to leave the comfort of our homes. With Audible Premium Plus, the universe of stories is at your fingertips, offering a gateway to worlds both real and imagined. Right now, new members can embark on this auditory adventure with a one-month free trial, including two free audiobooks. Whether you're into the mysteries of the cosmos, the intricacies of human achievement, or the depth of personal narratives, Audible brings a library of untold stories to life. Pause here and take a moment to consider the vast universe of books waiting for you. Begin your free trial today by clicking the link in the description or the pinned comment. Now, as we return from the realm of boundless stories, let us focus on the issue the space shuttle program often had where bits of foam insulation would come off the fuel tank and hit the shuttle during launches. At first, NASA didn't think these foam hits were a big deal. They believed the shuttle and its fragile heat shield could handle these bumps without putting the mission or astronauts at risk. They saw foam falling off more as something to fix later, not as something that could cause a serious accident. Since the shuttles always made it back safely after these incidents, NASA started to think foam strikes weren't a major concern. The Space Shuttle Columbia's final mission, STS-107, embarked with a crew of seven remarkable individuals. At the helm was Commander Rick Husband, a pilot whose veins pulsed with an undying passion for the cosmos, leading his team with unparalleled professionalism tempered by a genuine warmth. His co-pilot, Willie McCool, and the assembly of mission specialists, Michael P. Anderson, Alan Ramon, Kalpana Chawla, Laurel Clark, and David Brown, wove a tapestry of unity, bound by a fervent resolve to push the boundaries of human understanding beyond the confines of our world. Together, they set off on a voyage aimed at conducting over 80 groundbreaking experiments, a quest to demystify the enigmas of physical, life, and space sciences. On January 16, 2003, as the Space Shuttle Columbia ascended into the sky, a seemingly minor yet fateful event unfolded 81 seconds after liftoff. A piece of foam insulation detached from the external fuel tank, striking the shuttle's left wing. This incident, captured on film, showed the foam impacting the wing. This critical moment, unnoticed by ground teams and the crew, compromised the shuttle's thermal protection system by cracking one of the fragile tiles. Immediately after the Space Shuttle Columbia suffered a foam strike upon launch, a sense of alarm began to ripple through the engineering team. Concerned about potential damage to the shuttle's critical heat shield, damage that could pose a grave risk upon re-entry, engineers urgently called for high-resolution satellite images to assess the extent of the damage. Despite their persistence, NASA's leadership seemed to dismiss these concerns. 
Mere days after launch, engineers warned in communications, ignoring the foam strike is a big mistake, and we're playing Russian roulette with the lives of our astronauts. Yet those at the helm of NASA remained unmoved, citing past instances of similar strikes that hadn't led to disaster. This dismissal of the engineers' warnings continued unabated as the mission progressed towards its doomed conclusion on February 1st. One week into the mission, Commander Rick Husband received a nonchalant email from Mission Control about the foam strike. Though the analysis was still underway, the message trivialized the event, suggesting it was only mentioned to prepare the crew for any questions from the media, a scenario that never materialized. The email's dismissive tone convinced husband and pilot Willie McCool that the foam strike posed no significant threat, leading to exchanges filled with jokes and light-hearted banter. As Columbia's re-entry loomed, the engineers' pleas for attention grew more desperate. Their concerns escalated with stark warnings like, we know there's damage on the left wing, and we're not doing enough to find out how bad it is. Communication became increasingly urgent. One engineer emphasized, I can't stress this enough. This could be the difference between life and death. Yet, their calls for further inspection through satellite imagery or a spacewalk were systematically denied. This consistent refusal to address the engineers' serious safety concerns highlighted a deep-rooted issue within NASA, where the allure of mission success and organizational prestige tragically took precedence over the astronauts' safety. On February 1st, tragedy struck as the Space Shuttle Columbia re-entered Earth's atmosphere on its return journey. The shuttle's damaged left wing couldn't handle the heat of re-entering the atmosphere. This failure led to a catastrophic loss of control, plunging the shuttle into a flat spin, a situation where the shuttle spins around its center of gravity, making it impossible to steer or stabilize. In this uncontrollable state, the aerodynamic forces acting on the shuttle's structure became too much to bear. The shuttle began to break apart. All over Texas, Folks saw pieces of the shuttle falling from the sky like a grim confetti over 2,000 square miles. This flat spin and subsequent breakup of the shuttle meant the immediate and heartbreaking loss of all seven crew members aboard. In the wake of the disaster, NASA and the world mourned the loss of seven heroes. The Columbia Accident Investigation Board laid bare the technical and organizational failures that led to the tragedy. A culture of normalization of deviance ineffective communication, and mismanagement of risk were identified as root causes. The report called for significant reforms in NASA's safety practices, decision-making processes, and organizational culture. The findings led to major changes within the Space Shuttle program. From that point forward, ensuring the safety of the crew became the top priority for every mission. In response to the disaster, NASA paused all shuttle flights, taking time to implement the necessary safety improvements and changes. Once NASA felt confident with the changes, shuttle missions resumed with a renewed emphasis on safeguarding the astronauts. This heightened focus on safety guided the Space Shuttle program through its remaining missions, contributing to the successful completion of the International Space Station. The program officially concluded in 2011, marking the end of an era in space exploration, but leaving a legacy of lessons learned and advancements in astronaut safety. Thank you for joining us in remembering this pivotal moment in space history. Subscribe to Tech Disasters for more stories like this.